Scott, let's transition a little bit. This wasn't discussed really with uh, Duke Tobin uh, too much, but there's been a lot of conflicting information on Tyler Eifert. And we've talked about this a little bit on the program. I think we've had some listeners ask us about it, you know, you know, should they resign him and all that stuff. And that's part of the question, but I want to kind of update. There's been some recent information or recent stuff put out by Jeff Hobson of bangles.com. And essentially it had said that the Bengals were more interested in potentially re-signing Tyler Croft or extending Tyler Croft, who was in the last year of his rookie deal, instead of instead of uh, giving Eifert. T- Tyler Eifert. A, yes, thank you, uh, Tyler Eifert. A deal. I was looking for the for the exact quote, but it was no. something to the effect of yeah, there are people in the building, uh, meaning the Paul Brown Stadium, that w- would rather see the team resign Tyler Croft instead of give Tyler Eifert a contract. Now. I, I don't know if that means, you know, what kind of contract that means that would be offered to Tyler Eifert and and if that's what the issue is or simply if it's Eifert missing so much time, but th- there's a lot of prongs to this to this situation and you know, one of them is the draft and develop strategy that the Bengals employ and they really, you know, that's their bread and butter. But, you know, you're letting a first-round pick walk out the door. Yes, he's had injuries, but when he's there, he's very effective. The other is the injuries and lack of production. You know, he, he played two games last year, was not a factor, um, and he has not been a factor since 2015, uh, and he was outstanding that year. But, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what to make of this. I, I guess – the first part of the question I want to ask you, Scott, on, uh, about your opinion on is: Do you do you believe that the Bengals would rather re-sign Croft over Eifert? And do you think, if if so, do you think that that has something to do with Eifert wanting maybe a bigger deal than they are willing to give, or is it just they want to cut bait because he's not available? I guess I. I mean, it's. Yeah, this is a very interesting question between these two guys because if you look at who they are, they're very different wide, I mean, very different tight ends. I mean, without a doubt, Eifert is the better talent. He's the better wide receiver. He well, better receiving tight end. He can do things that when you watch him back in 15, you're like, man, this guy's just, the way he gets open, the way he, you know, can get away from safeties, the way he can um, you know, catch in the ends. He just he's a he's you know, a, an elite tight end. The problem is He's not healthy. You mentioned the two games last year. He's had 10 games the last two years. In five seasons, he's played less than half of the possible games he could have played. And that's a problem. And I understand the Bengals' reluctance to sign a guy when his track record says, hey, I've played 10 out of the last you know, 32 games and only 39 games out of 80. Uh, Eifert has, already has less games than Croft does in two, in two more years. So – it's definitely a telling thing. Although when you look at the numbers, I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat that Eifert is, I mean, Eifert is by far the better player. His, you know, yards per game, receptions per game, you know, touch, whatever, you know, are each year have been better than anything Croft's ever done. But you know, with Croft, you get a stable, a guy who's going to be healthy and play on the field. So I think the big thing is what kind of contract are you looking at? I mean, if Eifert wants a, you know, Gronk, uh, Jimmy Graham, even what Julius Thomas got a couple years ago uh, down in Florida. And, you know, if he wants that kind of money, like top five tight end, like a Travis Kelsey, I can see the Bengals saying, you know, no way and not giving it to him. They've let some of their better free agents go in the past, such as Eric Steinbach and Kevin Zeitler and John Joseph, so forth. And, you know, I, I could see them saying, we just don't want to do that because this guy can't stay on the field. And it's always a different thing. It's not like it's this one reoccurring thing you can hope to fix. It's just, you know, it's, it's a, this part of his body, then in this part, then this part. And it's, it's just like, he's breaking down. That being said, if they want to extend Croft, you know, you would kind of hope it's not going to be something like that. You hope it's kind of a 4 million, 5 million, you know, somewhere where he's going to be paid, you know, in the 20 to 30 range, 15 to 30 range, as far as tight ends, you would hope to get Eifert for that because if there's a hometown discount, I don't know if he would offer that. 
uh, I'm sure the Bengals will probably try to go that direction, kind of like they people assume happened with Whit Wea. Sorry, with Whitworth last year when he ran and took the money in Los Angeles. So yeah, I think it all depends on what kind of contract they the players or what they think Eifert wants or what Eifert has maybe said he wants. Uh, yeah, if it's just a matter of giving them the same contract, something like a lower end, like a one year prove it or something, I'd be very surprised that they would want to get rid of Eifert just for the sheer fact of getting rid of him. I, I would hope the only reason they wouldn't sign him is if he wants a huge amount of money that he's worth when he's healthy, but just isn't healthy enough to really warrant that amount of yeah. money. Yeah. I mean, you'd hate to see just them cut ties with a former first round pick, former pro bowler, just because, but you know, so Croft was second in the team last year with seven touchdown catches and, and was a nice red zone weapon. Tyler Eifert is one of the best red zone weapons in all of football. When he's healthy, we've seen it. I, I go back to 2015, okay? And yes, the offensive line was much better than this current group is just two years later, three years later, I guess now. But when you looked at 2014 Andy Dalton to 2015 Andy Dalton, when he had healthy AJ Green, uh, you know, healthy Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill, healthy Marvin Jones, healthy Tyler Eifert, healthy Muhammad Sanu, a lot of those guys that he did not have, all of a sudden there's, you know, potentially, you don't want to hang your hat on it necessarily, but you have Tyler Eifert back. Supposedly he's going to be ready for OTAs. Uh, he was cleared for it recently in case you missed that bit of news. You have healthy Tyler Eifert, hopefully. Healthy AJ Green. You s supposedly are going to have a healthy John Ross. Uh, Brandon LaFell is scheduled to be back. You have Josh Malone who did. So my point is, is if the Bengals do some things on the offensive line, as they claim that they're probably going to do, we heard that from Rebecca earlier in the program. All of a sudden now, Andy Dalton has his plethora of healthy weapons. Now I agree with you, Scott, in the respect of, I don't think you can give Tyler Eifert some mega four or five year deal where, you know, it's a Jimmy Graham type of thing. It's a, you know, a, a Gronkowski type of contract. Yes. He's up in that echelon when he's healthy, but you just, that's, that's not a wise business decision. But I also think that it's not a wise business decision to let him go. I, I would not be opposed to the Bengals slightly overpaying for Tyler Eifert. I would not be opposed to the Bengals using the franchise tag on him to lock him up for one year especially if they do a lot of things this year to help their team and they feel that, Hey, you know, we're, they apparently feel they're close to the playoffs again. Uh, I don't necessarily know if I believe it as we sit here in, in going into March, but they believe they're close. And I think if you overpay a little bit for one year, the Bengals are always under the salary cap every year. I don't think it's a bad move to, franchise tag Tyler Eifert and the last time they they used a, a, a franchise tag on a kind of expensive player it was Michael Johnson he had a big uh big year 11 and a half sacks and then he followed it up with like three sacks and then he, they then they let him walk in free agency the next year they said you know what that didn't work out I, I I'm not opposed to the Bengals spending a bit of money on uh, you know uh, quite a bit of money on Tyler Eifert and using the franchise tag to you know keep them for one year that's kind of a trial basis is it not yeah and i think uh, it also protects you because like i mean you obviously hope you don't get into the kirk cousins thing where you franchise him you know ad, ad nauseum but, <laughs> but yeah i mean the franchise thing is a way to keep him from walking it's a way that hey if he is healthy it's a chance to see what he can do and like you said they're always under the salary cap they always seem to have a lot of extra money and it's interesting you mentioned the Michael Johnson thing because that one worked out really well. They actually tried to give him a big extension. He turned it down. They gave it to Carlos Dunlap, and that ended up looking like a great move to lock, lock up Dunlap instead of Johnson because then Johnson left, went to Tampa Bay, wasn't very good, came back, and we got him much cheaper. So we ended up with both of them anyway for a lot cheaper than we would have had Johnson taken the deal. But, yeah, I, I, I would agree. That would be a great way to get him locked up. I don't know who else they would really – look to use it on because if you look at the pending free agents uh, 
next year. You know, guys they kind of have coming up, you need to extend. Yeah, you know, someone like him and Croft, they're they both hit free agency after this season, but or after this upcoming season, and then you have like some secondary depth and then you know your line, but that line's probably expendable anyway. And I to their point, I think if they're close to playoffs, I you know, if they get five offensive well, I'd say but Bowling's good. You get four offensive linemen between now and September. I think they are a playoff contender. <laughs> I, I don't know if they do that, depending on you know how the draft shakes out and what they do in free agency. But he's also someone that you know he is a horrible blocker too when he's on the line. I mean, he's not. I don't know if I'd put him as good as Gresham was. And as much as people hated Gresham for various reasons as a receiver, he was a very good blocker. I uh, would have to go back and look and see how he rates with Croft. I I know when he came out of college, Croft was considered a good blocker. So I don't know if that's what the Bengals are thinking. Hey, we'd prefer Croft because you know, this might be it too. We want a guy who can stay in line and block because our offensive line isn't that good. So we're just going to put six against, you know, three or six against four to make up for not having good tackles. You hope that's not the case because then you have fewer people, you know, going out for passes. But uh, yeah, I, I would hope they would at least make some sort of attempt to keep Eifert and not just say, yeah, you're good, but thank you. We're moving on. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but there was for those of you, and you can read into this as much or as little as you want, but for those of you who are on social media, Tyler Eifert had a, uh, an Instagram post where uh, I think it was a video where he was at a local city. And this is after that. This is like a couple of weeks ago. He was at a local high school basketball game with Jonathan Hayes, the tight end coach with the Bengals. That tells me, and I think I, I think Eifert would kind of say, yeah, I'd like to be back with the Bengals. That tells me that, yeah, the guy wants to be there. And as little of a sign as that is, I mean, he's hanging out with his position coach at a local Cincinnati area high school catching a basketball game in the offseason before free, right before free agency. That tells me that, you know, he's not doing the Jeremy Hill where he tweets goodbye to, to Cincinnati. <laughs> I mean, he he's hanging out in the area and wants to kind of wants to stay. So um and that's not always the case with Bengals players and and some of their better players which Eifert is when he's healthy I guess the last question I want to ask you on this topic Scott is if they let Eifert walk how confident are you in the Bengals employing Tyler Croft CJ Uzama Mason Mason Shrek who was on IR last year and Ryan Hewitt, who's kind of their H back. I mean, that's unless they, you know, go out and get another guy. Those are kind of the guys that they would have in that tight end H back type of group. Now, how, how confident are you in that group without Eifert in the picture? Well, first I'll say, I hope they just don't let Eifert go because this is a team that refuses to let Adam Jones go. Yeah, <laughs> if you keep Adam Jones. Why are you letting Eifer go? You know, Eifer seems seems to be nothing but a great player, great person, as far as we can tell from the outside. That being said, if they do let him go, if he does walk, if someone does throw a ton of money at him, the Bengals can't justify. You are losing a, a potentially great tight end when he's there, but I don't think it's a deal breaker if if they get the blocking. And the reason I say that is you you have a great running back in Joe Mixon who you know, they seem to be implying it's going to be their bell cow. You have a very good Giovanni Bernard there who showed he has, you know, obviously a lot of life left last year in what he did. So you have a good running, you have a good running tandem. You have a decent quarterback when he has weapons around him. You still have AJ Green. You know, in theory, your wide receivers could be really good depending on, you know, what happens to John Ross. If he can step it up, uh, Tyler Boyd will be entering his third year. He he has some ability. You have, you know, these younger players stepping in so it could be you may not need to have that great tight end as a wide receiver or as a receiver because you have these other people and you know Bernard and Mixon's running backs can both catch out of the backfield and they catch very well so you've got great running backs that can catch very well you have a you know an elite wide receiver you have some young guys who if they fulfill the potential that you hoped when you drafted them in the second round with Boyd and ninth overall with Ross you would hope to think that we could overcome that and then Croft in his, in his own right as a tight end isn't a horrible one I mean, he's not Eifert but he's not uh you know Daniel Coates he's you know, he's a decent solid guy who seems to be able to block and catch he had nine or sorry seven touchdown receptions last year so obviously he is a guy they can use in the end zone he's a guy who can make plays 
And then you mentioned like some of the other guys. I don't know what they see with Uzama and Shrek. Shrek was one, kind of seemed like one of those flyers with a late pick. So it'd be interesting to see if he's on the roster next year. Uzama two years ago seemed like the guy they were going to go with. And then last year, I think his receptions dropped from like 25 to 10 as Croft kind of took over that role. So, but I, I think Croft would probably be the main guy going forward. I think he'd be a, a step down, but not a huge step down. And I think that drop could be made up for what they have potentially you know, at wide receiver and at running back. So Tyler Eifert in his career, granted he's uh, a couple of years older than uh, in terms of seasons accrued uh, than Croft and CJ Ozama. He has Eifert has 20 total touchdowns twice as much in his 20 career touchdowns. Tyler Croft and CJ Ozoma have 10 combined in their respective careers. So twice as many touchdown catches, obviously many of them, 13 of them, I believe were in that outstanding 2015 season, but there's no doubt when he's out there, he's, he's a dominant player. Um, it's, it's just that if, and when he is out there, big question for the Bengals this off season, obviously their biggest name uh, free agent to be this year. And, you know, if you're not going to spend the, the money on Tyler Eifert, you better spend it somewhere. I mean, that's that's kind of my opinion. And it better be on a guy who can come in, contribute, potentially start, and uh, really help your team out. Because if you're not willing to pay a, a, a big contract to a player that went to a Pro Bowl a couple of years ago for you, you're going to need to spend that money somewhere in order to not only improve your football team, but improve morale of your own team, improve fan morale, because sitting on your hands and, and continuing to let your, your best and former Pro Bowl players walk is, uh, to me, is not a way to endear, endear yourself to the fans and not a way to improve your football team. What do you guys think? There's a lot of comments in the, the YouTube chat. It seems like a lot of people are, uh, they do like Croft. I think everybody can agree that yeah, you know, I'm seeing comments from Joe Johnson, Michael Myers, and and others in the in the live YouTube chat that are, um, you know, kind of saying they like Croft. They they like him, don't love him, and I think that's the that's the thing with Eifert. You love him when he's there, but it, you, <laughs> there's a lot of times you don't like him because he's not there. But uh, I I personally hope that the Bengals re-sign him. I I I'm kind of for the franchise tag at this point. I am not opposed to overpaying him a tiny bit. Um, if you need to, and and giving it one more year to see if you can really get something big out of him. Uh, and like I said, if if you're not going to pay him, that better go to you know an offensive lineman or or somewhere in free agency that's that's going to help your team. This is the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. I'm Anthony Cazenza. He is Scott Schultze. You can get this program on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and CincyJungle.com. We are also reachable via email, theobinsider at gmail.com, and via Twitter at BanglesOBI. We've got a couple of listener questions we are going to get to. We're going to try and get to uh, maybe one or two more in the live YouTube chat if you have some. Uh, so leave those in the live chat. We'll be monitoring that.